What we have here is a piece of specially selected pork loin. We've got the rib end on the bone here, which would then come up to the shoulder of the animal. So this end does a little bit more work. And down at this far end here, we would have the rump of the hind leg of the animal here. You can see the eye of the loin and the pork tender loin here. What we're going to do is demonstrate how to debone it and prepare the loin as a rolled joint with some nice crackling on the back. So the first thing we want to do is remove this piece of pork tenderloin. And to do that, I just pull the loin away with my left hand all the time, exposing the seam to allow me to get in behind it with my knife. And the tenderloin we can then trim up and use later. So to remove all of the bones in one piece, we've got the rib bones coming down up to here, and then we've got the smaller sirloin bones here. So what I'm going to do is start by coming down the back of these rib bones. Roasting your pork loin on the bone obviously imparts an awful lot of flavour and it looks very good as well uh, if it's part of a carvery. But the idea behind doing it boneless is just to make it that little bit easier for cooking and easier to carve. And all I'm doing here is just separating the muscle from the bone with my left hand and it allows me to then get my knife in barely cutting, I'm not putting any pressure on with my knife at all, I really just want to follow the seam down to the, the feather bone in the bottom. And that feather bone is the middle of the animal and you can see there the spinal column. So we're now down to that bone there and we want to make a start on these shorter ones. Again pulling back with my left hand all the time just to avoid cutting into the meat as much as possible. As soon as we make an incision into the meat, it's another place where moisture can escape during cooking. So we want to keep that to an absolute minimum. And these rib bones, of course, they don't have to go to waste. They can absolutely be used for stock or whatever you want to do, but there's no reason why we can't take a saw along there and use them as spare short ribs. We'll pop them to one side just now. And that leaves us with a boneless piece, but of course it's not the tidiest of joints just yet. We've got quite a bit of trimming to do. And the first thing that I'm feeling here is this little bit of shoulder blade that's been left over from where the shoulder was removed. So we'll discard that. Now, I'm just first of all running my hand along to make sure all the little bone shards and what have you have been removed. You can see just in here, you get little specks left over sometimes, and we just want to remove that. Okay. So, the eye muscle in this loin is going to be by far the most tender piece. So what we want to do is take away some of the other muscles that won't lend quite well to the eating quality. It does mean that you're going to have more wastage compared to what you're going to put on the plate, but it does lend for a better eating quality for the customer to remove some of these other muscles and just have the nice eye muscle for roasting. Of course, we will utilize the muscles that we're going to take off. Don't waste anything at all. And as you can see, again, there's a natural cutting line, there's a natural seam, and I'm just pulling it back with my left hand. When seam cutting, it's very important to start from one end and work all the way along. I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to keep this piece on, just to demonstrate the difference we can have from having this cap on to not having quite as much on this side. But we do want to remove a lot of the pieces of silver skin, gristle, sinew that we find along here. It's 
So now we want to look at the loin itself. And as you can see, we've got some little blood spots, again, some little bits of gristle. We've also got this chain down the side here, which again, isn't going to eat quite as nicely as the rest of the loin. So we're going to remove it. Again, it's all about consistency in what you put on the plate. It's still edible, it's still tasty, but there will be more of a chew to it than compared to the rest of the loin. And so diners might not always appreciate that. Now, when we get into this side of things here, we want to remove this without cutting too deep into the meat at all. So now we're just going to remove some of this dry fat down the back here and then we'll start to prepare the skin for crackling. So, onto the skin. Now there are various ways to get good crackling. I'm sure everybody has their favourite. But I suppose there's just a couple of good rules to have before you apply whatever method you want to use. The first thing is, when you're scoring the skin, don't score too far down. You do want to cut into the fat very slightly. You do not want to go past that and go into any meat or flesh. So, tip of my knife, very, very sharp. Decide which way you want to do it. And by that I mean, do you want to crisscross for a diamond effect? Or do you want to score it the same direction that you're going to cut slices? That's what we're going to do for the purpose of this. So what I'm going to do is, instead of making it difficult for myself and doing either end all the way along, I'll put my hand at this side and just very carefully insert just the tip of my knife at various intervals, but roughly the same, and we're just cutting through skin. And then I'll turn us round. And again, in between where I've done the slashes on this side, is where I'm going to do them on the other side. And the reason I find it easier to hold this with my left hand is just to pull that skin a little bit tighter so that the knife will pull through a lot easier. Now we can have a look at this and we can see if we want any more slashes. It depends how heavily scored you like it. But you can see there, that we've got slices just through the skin, into the fat very, very slightly, but there's no meat showing whatsoever. So that's what we want. Then all we're going to do with this now is tie it up ready for roasting. Now, it's still pretty flexible, it's pretty loose, because we've only kept it together. But if you look at the other side, we've got that lovely lean pork, the nice scoring on top to give us perfect crackling, and I think that would be a terrific piece of roast pork loin fit for any table.